Hello and welcome to Recyclist. It's March 15th, 2024. I'm your host, Eric Provost, and this is your weekly roundup of all the biggest news stories in the world of renewable natural gas, sponsored by Diamond Scientific. First up, and as always, let's take a quick look at the stock market and five stocks on the move this week within the world of renewable natural gas. As of March 15th, 2024, Clean Energy Fuels Corps is currently trading at a value of $2.51. Ranger Energy Services is currently at a value of $11.49. Evergy Incorporated is up to $51.52. Republic Services Incorporated is at $185.98, and Waste Management Stock is currently trading at a value of $210.02. And first up in the news, according to Bloomberg NEF's Sustainable Energy Factbook released this month, renewable natural gas has surpassed concentrated natural gas in terms of total natural gas consumed by vehicles. The data confirms that the move to RNG from CNG is happening much faster than anticipated. The same study also noted that, quote, 17 gas utility companies now have regulatory approval to sell renewable natural gas, end quote. The use of RNG on roads is expected to continue to expand, in part due to new technology. Now in New Jersey, a hearing was held this past week to discuss a new bill which would require 100% of retail electricity sales in the state to come from quote-unquote clean energy sources by 2035. In advance of the hearing, a letter was sent to Governor Murphy and state lawmakers co-signed by more than 100 different groups calling for changes that would strengthen the bill. The letter said, quote, The choice is between a robust clean energy economy with tens of thousands of new, life-supporting green jobs fairly distributed throughout all demographic groups, or climate havoc and economic and environmental injustice based on continued and increased reliance on dirty fossil fuels. End quote. Also last week, we got a look at many companies' fourth quarter financial results, including Jivo, who's reporting that efforts are continuing to secure a U.S. Department of Energy loan guaranteed to support the construction of the company's proposed sustainable aviation fuel facility. Jivo also reports that its renewable natural gas project in Iowa operated at 91% capacity during the fourth quarter. Throughout last year, the capacity at that plant increased from 350 to 400,000 metric meter BTUs. Another notable example of the end-of-year financial reports came from Opal Fuels, whose CEO, Jonathan Maurer, said, quote, Over the last two years, we have more than doubled RNG production and significantly expanded our fueling station network while continuing to organically grow our project pipeline with industry-leading partners. We are pleased with our results as we leverage the benefits of our vertically integrated platform. We now have 5.2 million metric meter BTUs of annual design capacity online at eight RNG facilities. We anticipate ending 2024 with 8.8 million metric meter BTUs as Prince William, Sapphire, and Polk County projects begin operations. End quote. Now in Pennsylvania, current Governor Josh Shapiro is offering his own version of the Northeast's Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative Program to limit climate warming pollutants from power plants and is setting new goals for how much energy Pennsylvania gets from renewable sources. Former Governor Tom Wolf proposed joining the RGGI with 10 northeastern states in 2019. However, the effort is still tied up in court as some are trying to stop the state from joining. Now Shapiro says he wants to create a Pennsylvania-specific program to cap carbon emissions and make power plants pay to pollute. He's calling it the Pennsylvania Climate Emission Reduction Initiative and says it's based on the conclusions of his RGGI working group. The plans are getting praise from environmental and renewable energy groups who have been pushing for a transition to cleaner energy sources. And just a reminder, Recyclist is brought to you by Diamond Scientific, an industry leader in gas analysis, instrumentation, and solutions. And speaking of solutions, make sure to check out their full line of Optimax biogas analyzers, the newest generation of state-of-the-art handheld biogas analyzers, perfect for a wide array of gas analysis situations.
You can see them online at diamondsci.com. That's diamondsci.com. Or call them at 321-223-7500. Now on with the news. Now in Ontario, Canada, Char Technologies is proposing a new biomass upgrading site at Kirkland Lakes through the use of high temperature pyrolysis. According to CEO Andrew White, quote, we heat up wood in the absence of oxygen. We heat it up to 900 degrees Celsius with no oxygen so the wood can't burn, but it cracks apart into a gas and a carbon, end quote. The gas is then upgraded to renewable natural gas and pumped directly into the pipeline, while the carbon itself can be converted into biochar, an environmentally friendly substitute to the coal-based fuels used in steelmaking or nickel smelting. Char Technologies runs a pilot facility in Thorold, Ontario, and has recently received $5 million in federal government funding to expand into other areas, including the province's north. And speaking of Thorold, the Canadian Minister of Energy and Natural Resources announced in the city this past week a federal investment of $15 million Canadian to support six clean fuels projects across Canada, including $10 million Canadian for two projects in the Niagara region. The investment also includes $4.6 million to Stormfisher Hydrogen to support a front-end engineering study for renewable natural gas production at BMI's multimodal hub in Thorold. If the study leads to a positive investment decision, the project could wind up supporting over 100 construction projects and around 30 full-time jobs during operations in the town. Now touching back on the Department of Energy again for a moment, as part of President Biden's Investing in America agenda, the U.S. DOE announced this past week $750 million for 52 projects across 24 states to dramatically reduce the cost of clean hydrogen and reinforce America's global leadership in the growing clean hydrogen industry. These projects, funded by the president's bipartisan infrastructure law, will help advance electrolysis technologies and improve manufacturing and recycling capabilities for clean hydrogen systems and components, directly supporting more than 1,500 new jobs. And if you're going to be in Pennsylvania next month, Penn State is actually holding a short course on renewable natural gas opportunities April 4th and 5th at their campus at University Park. The course is said to offer participants a comprehensive understanding of RNG production, utilization, and market opportunities. The Associate Research Professor of Agricultural and Biological Engineering at Penn State said, quote, Renewable natural gas presents a compelling opportunity to decarbonize our energy systems, mitigate greenhouse gas emissions, and create a more sustainable future. Through this course, participants will gain the knowledge and skills needed to harness the full potential of RNG and drive positive change in their communities, end quote. And lastly, Carbonova Core, a startup that aims to turn greenhouse gas emissions into carbon materials for sustainable and inexpensive everyday essentials, announced today that it has successfully closed its safe equity and financing in an oversubscribed round with $6 million raised. The company intends to use the net proceeds from the financing to advance its strategy toward building the first commercial demonstration carbon nanofibers unit in Canada. This funding adds to the previously announced $2.5 million from Sustainable Development Technology Canada and the National Research Council of Canada Industrial Research Assistance Program. And that has been your weekly Recyclist News Roundup brought to you by Diamond Scientific. I've been your host, Eric Provost, and I'll see you back here next week for another brand new episode of Recyclist. Thank you.